All right, so today we're, I'm cleaning deer meat. Um, it's a big chore for me anyway. It's the part of it I'd, I like the least. But it's got to be done. Uh, lately we've had quite a few comments asking questions about the meat since well, since I've been hunting and we've been talking about it. Uh, people kind of wanting to know what it tastes like. and uh, If it's cleaned really good, it, it's very, very good meat. Very good meat. Uh, but you kind of have to do it yourself in order to get it as clean as what I think it ought to be. I'm real picky with it. Uh, I don't take it to a processor or let somebody else do it. I do it myself and it's a lot of work. Uh, but that's just the way it is. A lot of people eat it and say it was gamey or they didn't like the taste of it and almost guaranteed they ate or it was processed with some of this stuff in it. The, uh, silver skin or the connective tissue that's on the top of the meat and it also wraps and folds down around each muscle this is a hind quarter of a deer and there's uh, three or four major muscles in that and, and this stuff wraps all the way around on the inside and the only way to get that off is you've got to separate all those and clean all those pieces individually uh, that's the only way to make it taste good as far as I'm concerned. That's my opinion of it and that's the way I've always done it. Uh, I've always done my own meat. Dad taught me how to do it years and years ago. He does his own still. And uh, to me it's the only way to do it and do it right is to, is to completely break it apart and get every bit of this stuff off of it and you're just left with lean red meat. Uh, I've got a like I say, I've got a hind quarter here, and I'm going to break it down, and I'll show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. First thing I'm going to do is get this, get the bone out of it. That's another thing that I don't, I don't want to leave. I don't want bones in my meat. It's not on wild game. Uh, it's just my preference. And there's quite a bit of what you'd call waste in this, or what people would deem as waste. But I don't want to eat that, the white part of it, or the fat. A lot of people have asked us about fat on a deer. I don't like deer fat at all. I think it's it gives it a bad flavor, in my opinion. I just don't like it. I mean, other people may like it. I don't know, but I don't. You know, beef and that sort of thing. The, the fat on it actually gives it flavor, but to me, deer fat is is not a good flavor. So now that that thing's the bones out of it, and you can kind of unfold it, you can see where all that stuff kind of wraps around and goes inside itself. And I I find those seams, and that's where I begin to break it apart and to separate all of them so that you can get all that off. And if you don't do that, this is what's cooking up inside your meat that you can't even see. I mean, if you cook a ham whole, and I've known of people to do that, and that's fine, whatever you wanna do, but I don't like it that way. Also inside here, right there is one of them, is a, some sort of a little gland. I don't exactly know what it does, or I'm sure somebody will know, but I don't want to eat that. <laughs> and I want, the only way to get those out is you've got to break it down like this and get it apart. And these things are really slick and really cold. They've been in the cooler for several days. I like to put them in the ice, ice box. That's how we do it is the ice box because we don't have access to a, you know, a walk-in cooler. But put it in the cooler, keep it on ice for several days and I always salt it. And that helps drain some of the blood out of it. That's another thing that's, you know, kind of a, kind of gives it a 
funky flavor is the blood. A lot of people keep some of this that I'm throwing away to grind. Uh, we don't grind much meat at all. Although I did did grind a little bit this year because my dad had a grinder down there and we ground some beef fat into the in what we ground and it turned out very, very good. But I don't have a grinder here, so a lot of this, a lot of these smaller pieces that's got a whole lot of that connective tissue, I'm not keeping. I mean, you can keep keep any bit of this you want. It's just a lot of those smaller pieces are really, really hard to, once you break them down and try to get inside to get that stuff out, you're not left with much, so I don't fool with them. All right. Here's one of, one of the muscles. I don't know what it's called. I'm sure a butcher would, could tell you what each one of those are. I don't know. But I just begin trimming real lightly and try not to get very deep and just trim all of that, all of that, what's called silver skin off of it. And it's fairly tedious, especially trying to save as much of the meat as you can. And this one's kind of got some hack marks in it, but it don't matter because we're going to can this. I'm going to break all these down, all these muscles apart and get them clean and then cut them up into small chunks and they're going to go, they're going to be canned. So it really doesn't, it don't have to be pretty. It just needs to be clean. And a really, really good sharp knife helps. My dad uses a razor knife or a carpet knife, whatever you'd like to call it, and that way he can just replace the blades as they get dull. I'd rather, I like to use something that's got a long, thin blade, like this fillet knife. When it begins to dull, which it's beginning to get that way, I can just touch it up with a hone and go again. What kind of knife is that? That is a Victorinox boning knife, I think. I think you can get these on Amazon. Uh, this is the first year that I've actually used this one, and it works really well. And they're fairly inexpensive, I think. $40 or so. But it's... I've got lots and lots and lots of knives, but most of what I've got is not conducive to being good doing this, but this, this knife works really well for it. And it's fairly easy to sharpen. You can go back and get all these little pieces that I missed. You can get by with a little bit of this stuff if you're canning it, as far as I can. I'm concerned. I mean, I don't still don't want much in it. It will it will dissolve a little bit in the canning process, but I still it's got a flavor I don't like. So I try to get as much of it as I can without creating a, just a tremendous amount of waste because it tasting good is of. I mean, that's why we do it. It's the only reason the only reason in the world I do this at all is to eat it. Uh, I'm not a trophy hunter as they say I'm a meat hunter and the only reason I want to do this is to feed the family with it so I try to make it get it as clean as I can make it taste as good as possible so what's what you left with is just a pure red piece of meat we'll cut this up into little chunks once I get all this done and it will be packed in jars and put in a pressure canner okay now I'm gonna start on the next piece and it's a little bit different I'll all these muscles are different from one another, but I've done so many of them that I pretty well know where to go and where to start. This particular one is can be a little difficult because it just 
has so many folds and you just keep unrolling them and there's more of that stuff that I want to get out. And by the time you get it all out, you're not left with a tremendous amount of meat. But that's the way I do it because I don't want to eat that stuff. I'm convinced that the people that has eaten deer meat and didn't like it, that's what they were eating. Because I've eaten it for many years that didn't have any of that in it, and it's fantastic. And I'm a good example of that. I never liked deer meat. I never had much deer meat, but um, there's not, back in those days when I was growing up, there just wasn't as many deer. There wasn't a deer population here like there is now. But I did have deer. My Uncle Henry, he was a deer hunter. My brother Steve was a deer hunter. So there was deer meat that come our way sometimes. And I never liked it for the very reason other people say they don't. It's because it tasted gamey and it was tough and it just was no good. Two things, uh, like Matt was saying, one, the first big one is that they didn't know how to clean it right. And then the second would be that we didn't know how to cook it either. But I, I think the key though is the cleaning. Yeah, it is the cleaning. Uh... Another thing people do, and it's, it's just like I say, it's preference. Another thing people do is overcook it. Uh, everybody's got their own preference on how done they want their meat. Uh, to me, it's a little bit more critical on deer meat than on domestic meat because the, the juices that's in the meat is where the flavor is. And in wild meat, when you cook it out, there's no fat. I mean, if you do it this way, there's no fat to make up for overcooking all the juice out of it. So if it's overcooked, it's, you know, it's just not as good. And I like meat, I like meat a little more rare than maybe some others do anyway. Uh, I'd be, I would be more fearful of eating rare, you know, something like beef than I would deer. I've eaten deer meat, it's pretty rare. But it's something that I cook myself and, and I, I cleaned it myself and I've eaten it that way for many years and never had a problem. But I also understand some people just can't eat it that way and that's fine. Once I met Matt and he started cooking deer meat for us, my entire fi family said, okay, we'll leave all that to Matt. <laughs> And they have for the last 30 years. Another question you get pretty often is, uh, are you worried or concerned about the wasting disease? And do you are you afraid of the meat that you eat? No, I'm not afraid of it because, I mean, if I killed one that was sickly. You wouldn't eat it. I mean, I'll pay attention to what I'm doing. I wouldn't eat it if it, you know, if it, if it looked bad or if it was uh, ill, you know, if it had a you know, diseased looking or just, you know, didn't look good. But so far I've not. I've not killed any that way, uh, but I do pay attention to it. And if I've, if one of them did look like that, then I probably wouldn't eat it. But so far, it's not been an issue. I just feel like it's, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, responsibility of, of the person that hunted and killed it to pay attention to that. And it may be that, uh, you know, they have testing sites even here to where you can have them tested uh, for it. It may be that they don't, they may have it and don't look bad. I don't know. But I've done it this way all my life and I'm just going to keep doing it this way. Uh, if it looks healthy, I'm going to eat it. And I'm not going to be afraid of it. I'm not convinced, and I don't think they even, I don't know that they've, they even know that it can be transferred to humans anyway. I don't know. But I'm going to eat it until it hurts me, I guess, as they say, because <laughs> I like it so much. And I know it's good, really good meat. It's not being manipulated by man, so I'm going to keep eating it. Mostly what we do with all the, all the meat, we either can it or freeze it. Uh, like I say, I'm, we're going to can this. Uh, I like having some canned because you don't rely on a freezer to keep working to keep your meat preserved. The canning process 
once the jar seals, it will last, I don't know how long it will last. It theoretically would last several years. Uh, but we also freeze a lot of it too. We did have a freezer go out one time some years ago and lost quite a bit of deer meat before we knew it. Uh, that's a, that's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. There were several deer in there at that time. That was, gosh, that was probably 25 years ago, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah. But you don't have to worry about that in the canning process, but probably lots of people don't know how to can it. I learned it and it's a, it's a good practice. I mean, it's a, like I say, you can preserve the meat and you don't have to have, you don't have to have electricity or anything to, to keep it preserved. It will last for quite a while in a jar and it's done in a jar. No, it's you so, can, yeah. You can literally eat it cold out of the jar. It's cooked and done and preserved. Yeah, it's really good. And, and then and when we do cook it, we just warm it up. So all we're doing, we're not cooking, just warming it up. But you could do all kinds of things with it. Uh, we just don't because we just like it so good like it is. I mean, but you could pretty much any dish that you would that would call for ground beef, you could use the canned deer meat in its place. Yeah. If you wanted. Maybe not everything, but a lot of a lot of a lot of those dishes you could. Another question we get asked a lot is what would I do a butchering video like from you know, skinning the deer and cutting it up. And we might do one of those in the future. I would like to. Uh, a little bit, YouTube frowns on that sort of thing a little bit. I don't know exactly how we'd go about it. But I would love to do one of those. Uh, we'll just have to have to see what it, what the future holds with that. When I kill a deer, when I, just as soon as I, Either if I have to track it or whatever, most time I don't, and most time it's it's dead right there. But I typically will gut the deer right there. Uh, I feel like the as fast as you can get the guts out of it, and it can begin to cool. That's part of this process of the meat being uh, as good as it is. Uh, I don't, I know people and I hunt with people that don't do that and that's fine, whatever, but that's the way I do it. I, number one, I want it to begin to cool as fast as it is possible and get this process, process going. But also I don't want to drag a deer with the guts in it until it's heavier. Um, some people feel like that gutting a deer where they're hunting is not good because it will scare other deer away but I'm I know that's not the case because I've just seen it so much you know uh, most of the time especially where I hunt the guts don't last till morning anyway all the little animals in the woods coyotes buzzards uh, bobcats and foxes everything will all those little predators will smell it, find it, and they will make short work of it in short order. So, but I also understand too, even if they didn't, a deer, a deer don't know what that is, you know. If they could reason that out and know what that is, we'd never kill one to start with. I also like to be sure, look it over and be sure there's no hair on it also. That can affect the flavor of it. That one's pretty clean. So now I've got all the meat cleaned, all the fat and connective tissue and the silver skin and everything off. The next step is I'm going to can everything except the tenderloins or the back straps. Uh, I've also got the inside ones, inside inner tenderloins out. I'm going to cook those in a day or two maybe, and then the, the back straps I'm going to freeze. I like to grill those. Uh, hole on the grill, marinate them and grill them. That's, that's my particular favorite way to eat deer meat. Uh, we also fry it and can it and do a, during the holidays I'll make a, uh, do a whole hindquarter in the oven 
all night long and it's it's really good too um, we'll link to all those videos we have videos on that I think and we'll link to those uh, since we don't have a farm can't raise the animals like we'd like to do the hunting to get the meats just a good way to supplement you don't have to buy as much um, and this is really really good meat and it's just a, a, a way to um, provide meat for the family since we don't can't raise it and don't have a place to raise it and it's really good uh, organic meat you can't beat it uh, as long as you get it good and clean and prepare it and handle it correctly it's it's as good a meat as there is so hope you enjoyed this uh, like I say we'll link to the other videos we have on the the deer meat cleaning and cooking and as always thank you for stopping by and helping us celebrate Appalachia <laughs>